Inflation is a rise in prices. In other words, consumer purchasing power is declining. The rate at which purchasing power drops can be reflected in the average price increase of a basket of selected goods and services over some period of time. The rise in prices, which is often expressed as a percentage, means that a unit of currency effectively buys less than it did in prior periods. Inflation is in contrast with deflation, which occurs when prices decline and purchasing power increases. First, it's important to understand inflation. While it's easy to measure the price changes of individual products over time, human needs extend beyond just one or two products. Individuals need a big and diversified set of products as well as a host of services for living a comfortable life. They include commodities like food grains, metal, fuel, utilities like electricity and transportation, and services like healthcare, entertainment, and labor. Inflation aims to measure the overall impact of price changes for a diversified set of products and services. It allows for a single value representation of the increase in the price level of goods and services in an economy over a period of time. An inflation report might sound something like this. 8.3% change in consumer price index for urban consumers over the 12-month period ending August 2022. When you factor out food and energy, the index rose 0.6% compared to an increase of 0.3% in July over a 12-month period. The term price rise, which means one unit of money buying fewer goods and services, this is a loss of purchasing power and impacts the cost of living for the common public, which ultimately leads to a deceleration in economic growth. The consensus view among economists is that sustained inflation occurs when a nation's money supply growth outpaces economic growth. To combat this, the monetary authority in most cases a central bank, takes the necessary steps to manage the money supply and credit to keep inflation within permissible limits and keep the economy running smoothly. Monetarism is a popular theory that explains the relation between inflation and the money supply of an economy. For example, following the Spanish conquest of the Aztec and Inca empires, massive amounts of gold and especially silver flowed into the Spanish and other European economies. Since the money supply rapidly increased, the value of the money fell, contributing to rapidly rising prices. To learn more about money, see the link in the description. Inflation is measured in a variety of ways, depending on the types of goods and services. It is the opposite of deflation, which indicates a general decline in prices. When the inflation rate falls below zero, that's deflation. Keep in mind that deflation shouldn't be confused with disinflation, which is a related term referring to a slowing down of inflation. So what are the causes of inflation? An increase in the supply of money is the root of inflation, though this can play out through different mechanisms in the economy. A country's money supply can be increased by monetary authorities, by printing and giving away money to citizens, legally devaluing, reducing the value of legal tender currency, loaning new money into existence as reserve account credits through the banking system by purchasing government bonds from banks on the secondary market. This is the most common method. In all these cases, the money ends up losing its purchasing power. The mechanism of how this drives inflation can be classified into three types. Demand pull inflation, cost push inflation, and built in inflation. Demand pull inflation occurs when an increase in the supply of money and credit stimulates the overall demand for goods and services to increase more rapidly than the economy's production capacity. This increases demand and leads to price rises. When people have more money, it leads to positive consumer sentiment. This in turn leads to higher spending, which pulls prices higher. It creates a demand-supply gap with higher demand 
and less flexible supply, which results in higher prices. The cost-push inflation effect is a result of the increase in prices working through the production process inputs. When additions to the supply of money and credit are channeled into a commodity or other asset markets, costs for all kinds of intermediate goods rise. This is especially evident when there's a negative economic shock to the supply of key commodities. These developments lead to higher costs for finished products or services and work their way into rising consumer prices too. For instance, when the money supply is expanded, it creates a speculative boom in oil prices. This means that the cost of energy can rise, contributes to rising consumer prices, which is reflected in various measures of inflation. And lastly, built-in inflation. It's related to adaptive expectations, or the idea that people expect current inflation rates to continue in the future. As the price of goods and services rise, people may expect a continuous rise in the future at a similar rate. As such, workers may demand more costs, or wages, to maintain their standards of living. Their increased wages result in a higher cost of goods and services. This wage price spiral continues as one factor induces the other, and vice versa. Depending on the selected set of goods and services used, multiple types of baskets of goods are calculated and tracked as price indexes. The most commonly used price indexes are Consumer Price Index, CPI, and the Wholesale Price Index, WPI. The CPI is a measure that examines the weighted average of prices of a basket of goods and services which are of primary consumer needs. They include transportation, food, and medical care. CPI is calculated by taking price changes for each item in the predetermined basket of goods and averaging them based on their relative weight in the whole basket. The prices in consideration are the retail prices of each item as available for purchase by the individual citizens. Changes in the CPI are used to assess price changes associated with the cost of living, making it one of the most frequently used statistics for identifying periods of inflation or deflation. In the U.S., the Bureau of Labor Statistics, BLS, reports the CPI on a monthly basis. It has calculated this as far back as 1913. The WPI is another popular measure of inflation. It measures and tracks the changes in the prices of goods in stages before the retail level. While WPI items vary from one country to another, they mostly include items at the producer or wholesale level. For example, it includes cotton prices, including raw cotton, cotton yarn, cotton gray goods, and cotton clothing. Although many countries and organizations use WPI, many other countries, including the U.S., use a similar variant that's called PPI, or Producer Price Index. PPI is a family of indices that measures the average changes in selling prices received by domestic producers of intermediate goods and services over time. The PPI measures price changes from the perspective of the seller and differs from CPI, which measures price changes from the perspective of the buyer. In all variants, it is possible that the rise in price of one component, say oil, cancels out the price decline in another, say wheat, to a certain extent. But overall, each index represents the average weighted price change for the given constituents which may apply to the overall economy, sector, or commodity level. The above-mentioned variants of price indices can be used to calculate the value of inflation between two particular months or years. Inflation can be construed as either a good or a bad thing, depending on which side one takes and how rapidly the change occurs. Some pros. Individuals with tangible assets, like property or stocked commodities, may like to see some inflation, as that raises the price of their assets, which they can sell at a higher rate. Inflation often leads to speculation by businesses and risky projects, and by individuals who invest in company stocks because 
they expect better returns than inflation. An optimum level of inflation is often promoted to encourage spending to a certain extent instead of saving. If the purchasing power of money falls over time, then there may be a greater incentive to spend now instead of saving and spending later. It may increase spending, which may boost economic activities in a country. A balanced approach is thought to keep the inflation value in an optimum and desirable range. Now for the cons. Buyers of such assets may not be happy with inflation, as they will be required to shell out more money. People who hold assets valued in their home currency, such as cash or bonds, may not like inflation, as it erodes the real value of their holdings. As such, investors looking to protect their portfolios from inflation should consider inflation-hedged asset classes, such as gold, commodities, REITs, real estate investment trusts. Inflation-indexed bonds are another popular option for investors to profit from inflation. High and variable rates of inflation can impose major costs on an economy. Businesses, workers, and consumers must all account for the effects of generally rising prices in their buying, selling, and planning decisions. This introduces an additional source of uncertainty into the economy, because they may guess wrong about the rate of future inflation. Time and resources expended on researching, estimating, and adjusting economic behavior are expected to rise to the general level of prices. That's opposed to real economic fundamentals, which inevitably represent a cost to the economy as a whole. Even a low, stable, and easily predictable rate of inflation, which some consider otherwise optimal, may lead to serious problems in an economy. That's because of how, where, and when new money enters the economy. Whenever new money and credit enters the economy, it is always into the hands of specific individuals or business firms. The process of price-level adjustments to the new money supply proceeds as they then spend the new money, and it circulates from hand to hand and account to account through the economy. Inflation does drive up some prices first and drive up other prices later. This sequential change in purchasing power and prices, known as the Cantillon effect, means that the process of inflation not only increases the general price level over time, but it also distorts relative prices, wages, and rates of return along the way. Economists in general understand that distortions of relative prices away from their economic equilibrium is not good for the economy, and Austrian economists even believe this process to be a major driver of cycles of recession in the economy. So why is inflation so high in 2022? Inflation rates in the U.S. and around the world rose to their highest levels since the early 1980s. While there's no single reason for this rapid rise in global prices, a series of events worked together to boost inflation to such a high level. First, COVID-19 pandemic in early 2022 led to lockdowns and other restrictive measures that greatly disrupted global supply chains, from factory closures to bottlenecks at maritime ports at the same time, governments issued stimulus checks and increased unemployment benefits to help blunt the financial impact of these measures on individuals and small businesses. When COVID vaccines became widespread and the economy rapidly bounced back, demand, fueled in part by stimulus money and low interest rates, quickly outpaced supply, which were still struggling to get back to pre-COVID levels. Then, with Russia's unprovoked invasion of Ukraine in early 2022, this led to a series of economic sanctions and trade restrictions on Russia. This limits the world's supply of oil and gas, since Russia is a large producer of these fossil fuels. At the same time, food prices rose, as Ukraine's large grain harvests could not be exported. And as you now know, rising prices equal inflation.